Here we go. Five minute chess. The first game was a draw. They drew the first game. This is their second game of five minute blitz. Magnus opens up with e4, e5, and we have a Rui Lopez. Knight f6. Hikaru goes for the true and tried Berlin. He loves the Berlin. Magnus has no Berlin for you. Bishop c5 and bishop a4. That is a very, very big sideline. I have no idea what that is. c3, knight c3, all played before bishop g5. Magnus voluntarily retreats his bishop. And very quickly, we get, we get into a big maneuvering game. Notice the pieces. c3, d4 is the typical thing you want in the Spanish. A lot of maneuvering. Hikaru ends up routing his bishop to g7 and puts his queen on f8. I mean, you, it's very, very obscure maneuvering type of game until it's going to start breaking open. A few moves later, you see Hikaru double banging that pawn in the center from c5 and e5, opens it up with ed, brings the knight back to apply more pressure. Magnus plays d5, chops it down, and one pawn is going to break free in Magnus Carlsen's position, and it is the f pawn. Same side attacking chess, particularly on the short side, when the kings are cast on the short side, is done with the f pawn. And all Magnus has to do is restrict Hikaru on the queen side, and there it is. The declaration of hostility. This is Magnus Carlsen's first game with white. So this is early in the match. It's, it's, it's like round one of a fight. It's the first set of tennis. You're playing to each other's strengths and weaknesses, seeing what's good, what muscles are sore. E5. Critical move. But how does that move make any sense? Pawn to E5 is an ingenious move because you are playing on the square where black is strongest. You are literally playing to black strength like Novak Djokovic likes to do to his opponents in the first set. Hikaru takes... But now that pawn is a clogging of the arteries. All three pieces are now blocked because Magnus had no plans of recapturing F5. Like turning the screw, like putting the cap back on a bottle. And Hikaru is trying to break free, but Magnus walks him down. Rookie 7 and Hikaru resigns. Queen is hanging, but Rookie 8 would win the queen back. And it doesn't matter what takes back. If Rook takes E7, Queen takes A6. If Queen takes E7, Queen takes A6. Beautiful shot. Magnus gets the first win of the match in his first game with White. And he played a major sideline, so this is poking a major hole in Hikaru's opening repertoire. He is off to a great start. But they made a couple of more draws. And then Magnus got White again. This is picking up the match now 3-2. First segment, 5 plus 1 blitz. This time, Magnus is poking around and seeing what Hikaru's doing in a slightly different way. d5, takes, takes. Queen c2. So this is a Queen's Indian chosen by Hikaru. Takes, takes. Magnus takes a big center. Bishop d3. And pawn to h6, played by Hikaru. Now, everything is good. Magnus has a very reasonable position. Magnus playing d4, playing e4, seeing what Hikaru's playing, what openings he can bully a little bit. And now d5, a very nice idea. Once again, utilizing a central pawn breakthrough, the idea of which it's very difficult for Hikaru to take this pawn because this bishop is hanging. And once Hikaru doesn't take this pawn, that pawn is there to stay. That move is given a great symbol. I think Magnus is better than Chess.com's game review, but I digress. Hikaru gets active with his queen, looking to create counterplay. But Magnus playing on all three sides of the board. The center is locked. The queen side is expanding. The center has a rook fighting for equity. Magnus also controlling the king side as well. We are likely headed for an endgame. The rooks are off. It's queens, it's bishops, it's knights. Now it's just bishops and knights. And rather than taking like this, Magnus takes with the bishop. He didn't like the fact that the pawn was going to struggle to make progress. And now it is a bullet game. And it is the best endgame player of all time versus probably the best defensive player I don't want to say of all time, because, you know, Petrosian, there was like some very, very good defenders. Karpov was an incredible defender, but of the modern generation, it's not even close. Knight back to g8. Queen e7. It is close. Magnus is probably the second best defensive player of all time. Magnus looking and poking and prodding. He's got that pass deep on. Bishop c2, queen d2, queen a5. Is he going to find a way through? Four seconds each. It's a mad scramble. Also, this is an indicator for who's in better form in the bullet. Remember, they got to play bullet against each other. So time is ticking. D6. Magnus breaks through and he still has a pass pawn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is bad news. Hikaru's now down a pawn. And that pawn is running. And it's running really, really quickly. Bishop d5, queen f6. It's all over. It is all over. Actually, after bishop takes e6, Hikaru resigned because a queen trade is happening. The c-pawn is going through, my friends. If you're cheering for Magnus Carlsen, now's a good time to start. Because the last time... If you're not cheering for Magnus Carlsen, now's a good time to start. Last match they played, Hikaru roared out to a five-game lead. Magnus is up two. He's now up four to two, and he is looking real good. Physically, but also with white, when he plays the white pieces. Now, the match is 5-3. to three. It kept on going. It was a back-and-forth affair, but not yet. 
Magnus Carlsen led early and he led for a while. Hikaru looking to fight back by playing a very offbeat E4 Sicilian defense. Magnus played D5, took the center. And then we got C4, and it was uh, Magnus firing and all cylinders early in this position with G5. G5 is the move you make with black when you're up two games. Ridiculously exotic stuff. Pawn to D4, on passant, G4, queen takes on E5. Now, again, this is the sign of an arrogant man. I'm not calling Magnus arrogant. I am saying he is allowed to be arrogant because he's up two games against Hikaru. He's firing on all cylinders. And if he can put Hikaru down three games in the five plus one section, it is everything that he ever dreamed of. By the way, 25% off courses sell 48 hours if you watch the video. Uh, Bishop to E3. Also, all courses have a free sample. I'm just saying, like, look, 15 minutes. Remember, you promised me 15 minutes. After that, I don't care where you go. Let's try to get the average view duration of this video. I'm not even going to put an ad. There's going to be no mid-roll ads between 12 and 15 minutes deal i should have said that in the intro we're seven minutes in doesn't even matter just testing community bishop b5 and in this position magnus plays a very provocative move e5 that breaks all principles you are not supposed to be playing with pawns when your king is in the center much less when there's a rook on the other side and now all hell breaks loose. C4! A, a brilliant move. Pawn to C4, counterattacking. This is hanging. You can't take it because the bishop takes F6, because the bishop would hit the queen on F6. Knight C3, eight. The bishop's just hanging. The pawn, the knight is hanging. Hikaru's basically leaving all his pieces to hang in the name of initiative. Knight takes D5. Queen G6, now the other knight gallops in. C7 looking mighty juicy. Knight C7 check. The king slides to the center of the board. Bishop B6. The knight can't take the bishop because the knight is pinned to the king by white's queen on D1. Bishop B4, rook E3. Magnus's king is making a run for it with 28 seconds on the clock. He's winning. Magnus is winning this game. He's about to go up three games to end the five plus one segment. King F8, Bishop C5, Rook E2. Where's the moment? The king has escaped completely. The king has completely escaped. Magnus Carlsen is winning this game. The bishop has landed on D4. That was a mistake. Instead of putting the bishop on B4, he had to put it on its home square. Reason? I don't know. Stockfish is a scumbag. Hikaru takes. Hikaru back in the driver's seat. Pawn to D3. 20 seconds per player. Knight into E7. F4, hitting the queen. The queen is bouncing around like a piñata, but that's not even the right move. Apparently, the best move in this position was to give a check with the queen with white. It doesn't matter. They have 11 seconds on the clock, and they're human, and they're way better than you and me combined times five. Bishop g3, cutting everything off. Now, Magnus is winning again. H4, but he goes here. Hikaru plays knight d5. Magnus is just pushing the pace. All of a sudden, blunders rook f3 and rook g3, and he's losing his queen. He's losing his queen, but Hikaru's not even taking it because the queen is perpetually pinned. Queen g3, hg, Magnus tries to sneak the pawn in. But it's too little, and it's too late, and he resigns. Oh my god, my abs hurt from that commentary. Best chess commentary. Okay, can we just agree? Recap commentary? It doesn't come close. It doesn't come close. And you're allowed to say that, and I'm allowed to say, you know, we're the elephant in the room. And the elephant is me. That doesn't really make that much sense. But you know what? Whatever. I'm the elephant in the room. I'm the elephant in the room. There's nobody else in the room. I'm the, I'm, I, if I want to be an elephant, I'm going to be an elephant. You, you have no say in that. 15 minutes, you promised. You got five minutes to go. Rook F1. 5 plus 1 segment ends 5-4. Can't get any closer. Magnus had two moments to pull away. He didn't take him because Hikaru's the, the man. He's the man. I mean, he's not just going to go down like this. We enter the 3 plus 1 segment of this match. It is 5-4. to four. This, is, this is what dreams are made of. These are the two best speed players in the world, and it's not close. Okay, it's really not close. I mean, it's, it's, when they have bad days, it's close. It ain't close. Magnus opens up with d4. c4, b6. We have another Queen's Indian, Bishop B4, that Bishop's going to trade. Nice, Knight E4, this has been played millions of times. This actually was played in a recent Hikaru game. That's a mate, the Bishops are crossing against each other. It's a very, very solid position, F5, F4. Okay, all right, Hikaru, now Hikaru getting a little bit provocative with Magnus. You win a game against Magnus, you start, you know, like a fighter, you start dropping your hands. Put the hands behind the back, you know, you get up, you start, hands behind the back, like, oh, you can't hit, ooh, 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 Philly shell, like Sean Strickland, you know, uh, throw the front kick. Listen, I, this is going to be a hype recap. I, queen d2, queen f6, rook d1, knight a5 hits the pawn on c4, bishop b7, knight b7, e3. If there is one weakness in Magnus Carlsen's game, one, there's none. But if you had to say one or the universe would explode, kingside attacks, receiving. It's happened before, and he's human. Now, he might disagree with that. He might watch this and go, that guy's an idiot. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. With, I got 4 million subs. I got a little bit of credibility. And anybody pales 
in fear, cowers in fear a little bit when the king is attacked and you don't have a lot of time. E3, F3. That doesn't look that nice. And Hikaru's got a nice position and some of these things could get really dangerous and they do. Hikaru now uncorks five genius moves against Magnus Carlsen. First, Rook F4. You can't take because you're pinned and the threat is Rook H4. Rook E1, Rook F8, bringing in the next resource. And now Hikaru hits Magnus with the three-piece on the soda. Jorge Masvidal backstage versus Leon Edwards. We begin with Knight takes C4. Brilliant number one. He deflects the queen away from the defense of everything else. Why is this move so important? Because now the pawn falls and the game is over because rook h1, queen h5 is a devastating attack, but Magnus defends himself. No, he doesn't because now Hikaru sacrifices the queen, queen to g3. Oh my goodness. Queen g3 is ridiculous. King f1, this is mate. If you take the pawn gets through all these beautiful pieces. None of the bozos are watching the back rank anymore. King f1, rook h1, king e2, f1 queen, king d2, bouncing him back like a pinata, rook h2, game, set, boom, headshot, dead. Queen g3, knight c4, queen g3 was unbelievable. It's a tied match. It's 5-5. Five, five. This man played knight takes c4, rook h4, and oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that, that what? <laughs> Queen takes g3, this is unbelievable stuff. It's 5-5. Five, five. My friends, it's 5-5. Five five. The match is tied. We just played like an hour plus. Magnus had two game lead and he was close to making it a three game, it's tied match. Now Hikaru's gonna push the pace with white and you best believe this man was bobbing his head. Hikaru playing what's called the beginner's Sicilian. This is like when a beginner learns to develop these three pieces, this is called like the Bowdler attack or something and you know, black plays e6, but he's allowed to do this because it's blitz. He's not looking for an advantage. You're not looking for those a little microscopic advantage which you will very, very slowly develop over 40 moves and seven hours of play and nobody sponsors chess because all games are extremely long and very boring, but that's another point. A6, D4, he's not looking for an advantage. He's just looking for a position. Queen E2, Magnus plays D5 and D4 and C5 and Knight C6 and he's very... And the second he developed this bishop, Hikaru said, Get your way! What you doing, man? Magnus, you want a castle? Go ahead. Go ahead with my queen knocking on the door. Go ahead. And Magnus said, Come get some. That's what I love. When both guys are dead sure that their plan is the best, Hikaru says, You really want a castle? That's mate. Magnus says, So what? Hikaru says, <laughs> I'm not laughing. Magnus says, Hikaru, what are you doing? You have no attack. Hikaru says, Yes, I do. You unpinned and you can take my bishop. Not only can you take my bishop, you can take the whole g-file, Magnus. And in a couple of moves, you're probably thinking that you're going to checkmate me on g2. Look at this. Look at you go. Look at, Mag look at Magnus activating all of his pieces. Hey, my friends, Magnus has five seconds on the clock. This is not a good position for Magnus. White's pieces are completely restricting Black's oxygen. And when Black is done defending himself, White is not going to stop. Knight f3, pawn c3 now breaking apart the center. Take, take, wait. Karo didn't take back. Bishop c2. This move had nothing to do with taking over the center. The point of this move was to bring back the bishop. Who stops checkmate? I got news for you. This guy. Queen f8. Magnus Carlsen resigns. Hikaru's up 6-5. First lead of the match. Oh yeah. 6-5. to five. And he's winning multiple games in a row. In fact, if you've been counting, Hikaru won to 4, to 5, and to 6. This is the first time in his four-year career of playing in the Speeches Championship and all the games that he's played, Magnus Carlsen has never lost three games in a row. Not in his life. But even that's rare. Three games in a row. And this kept going. Hikaru built a two-game lead. E4, E5, knight f3, knight c6, again. And now Magnus opens up into the Berlin. So we go deep into the Berlin. This is the Berlin endgame. 
This is the opening. By the way, you're free to leave now. You, you could, any of you with bad attention span. All the uncool ones go. 16 minutes? You did good. You did listen. You did good. Knight c3, bishop d7, king c8, h6, b6. What? Black doing everything he's supposed to do. It's exactly how the Berlin is supposed to be played. Black develops a big structure. The king ultimately goes to b7. And now it's about how white decides to push for an initiative. And this is how. Magnus gives up his e-pawn. Hikaru says, okay, I'm the best defensive player in the world. Take, take, take. I'm a pawn up now. Let's go, Magnus. Come get some. Come get the pawn back, Magnus. You want the pawn so bad? Monkey in the middle. He, I don't know who Hikaru's teammate is. It's also Hikaru. Rookie one. Go, take the pawn back. Boom, g5. That's hanging, by the way. That's just 100% of free pawn. I think Hikaru's idea here was to play bishop d6. And it's actually very clunky getting the rook out. And if you're too slow, I might just trap it. So Magnus played g4, trying to kick the knight out before Hikaru had a chance to do anything. Now, king g2, king goes to b7, because now black's king is completely safe. Bishop to e5, take, take. Rook e8, take, take. Okay, the game is probably just going to be uh, Magnus pressuring Hikaru and winning the endgame. Rook e1, pawn to c5. Hikaru is down a minute on the clock. He's down 0.7 on the advantage. Magnus is the best endgame player of all time. Magnus plays h4, Hikaru takes, king h3, knight h4. And my man, Hikaru, a minute down, 40 seconds on the clock, just completely gives away a pawn. Completely gives away a pawn. You know why he's giving away a pawn? Because the rook is going to open up. And then when the rook opens up, he's going to fight back, and it's actually kind of difficult to defend that pawn. But Magnus finds a way to defend the pawn because he's Magnus Carlsen. He just goes for the bishop. Bishop h6. Now Magnus had to stay patient. He, wanted, he needs to play knight f4, guard the pawn, and slowly make progress. But he rushes. He blunders a check. King g4. And he blunders that the rook can go back. Now you may ask yourself, why not this? <coughs> I'm allergic to bad moves. Well, I'll tell you why. First, he would go here, king g5, and then this. And actually, even though you are up a piece, I give you a little clap. You have no advantage whatsoever. There's no advantage whatsoever. I'm going to get the pawns. I'm going to win the, win the pawns. You can't, you can't save the end game. Rook f2. You say, Levy, what are you talking Of course you can guard the pawns. No, knight f7, check. Oops. Hikaru saves this game. And suddenly, look at how much time Magnus just burned. After bishop h6. Bishop f4. Rook f5. Advantage gone. Dead. No advantage anymore. This was Magnus' chance. Rook f2. Pawn c4, game is going to end in a draw. That's it. Player shuffling back and forth. There was a mate threat, and this is very scary, actually. Magnus is uh, still pressuring Hikaru here. Rook and knight. He's got to get the knight out, though. He's got to get the knight out, though. He's got to get the knight out! And in a, in a time scramble, Magnus kind of panics, and rather than taking and saving the rook end game, he just... Let's Hikaru. Hikaru wins. Hikaru's up three games. It's eight and a half, five and a half. It's over. <laughs> it's, it's over. So at this point, they took a break because there was a commercial break and we're, we live in a, you know, capitalist dystopia. So, you know, there was a commercial break and there was ads and so on. And then the players came back. Magnus changed his shirt. He changed uh, shirts, which is a big deal and uh, not an update like for the latest tabloids. Magnus is now down three games. Can he find any effort? Can he find a second win? Because if not, he's going to lose this match. So Magnus plays a Sicilian. Hikaru plays C3, rookie one, and a, and a, and a very, very solid Sicilian where he keeps a relatively straightforward pawn structure. He takes very limited risk and he's just playing solidly. But I got news for you, Magnus Carlsen cannot play solidly because he is down uh, three points, so he sacrifices a bishop. <laughs> Magnus sacrifices a bishop in front of Hikaru's king and drives the knight to d3, and all of a sudden, Hikaru's got 29 seconds, Magnus has two minutes and nine seconds, he's got a brand new shirt, maybe because he ripped the other one, I don't know if he changed pants because, you know, the others suffered something. Knight h5, Knight g5, he tries to kick the queen out, but Hikaru's defenses are rapidly falling, and, and, and as a bonus, his bishop has barely any moves, and as a bonus, his pawn is falling, and his queen is hit, and the bishop is hit, and as a bonus, he's gonna lose a rook! 
So when you thought it was all over, he gets hit with like a 15 move combination. He's got no pawns left. His king is weak. He literally loses. He's down four pawns. And my friends, if you're a Magnus Carlsen fan, you better cheer right now because those pawns mobilize quickly. And at this point, the time ran out and Magnus Carlsen roared back with the shirt change gambit and only trails by two games. A fantastic game. And kind of one of these games where momentum is everything. You win three, you're up three games, and all of a sudden you take a break and you want to ease into it, and the man goes here, and uh, it's bad news. So, Magnus made a comeback, and now it's nine to eight. And this is the final game of three plus one. If Kikaro wins this game, he takes a two game lead to the bullet. If Magnus wins this game, it's nine nine. And he storms back from three games down. A Spanish. Now Hikaru playing a modern Steinitz, like a King's Indian-esque style game. Knight e5. Bishop takes a4. A lot of pieces traded. Hikaru's position a little bit passive, but slightly massive. h4. Magnus instigating. Trying to poke at Hikaru's king, creating light squared weaknesses. But Hikaru's doing a great job. Just sitting there, stubbornly defending himself, playing excellent chess, d4, looking to trade everything. Now we have f5. Oh my goodness, Hikaru utilizing all the resources. Rook a8, bishop f2, here comes Hikaru's king, and he's done everything he can to create a completely impenetrable fortress. Now it's about trading pieces down. And of course, the players have absolutely no time here. Rook a5 is not the blunder of a rook. The bishop can't take the rook because black would play rook takes king. So rook b6, rook a3. And now Magnus has this position to operate in where he is up a pawn, but they are completely immobile. Not a single one of them can move. This one maybe, but after pawn takes and rook g2, that's going to fall. Black has what's called a fortress. White is going to have to find a way in, but Hikaru is not going to allow it. Will Magnus overpress and panic in a time scramble? Look at this. I mean, everything is on the same side. You trade the bishops, you trade the rooks. You just can't get to a king and pawn endgame because that one is losing. But black hanging in there, both sides, five seconds, all hanging on a knife's edge. Magnus looking, looking, but he can't find anything. Hikaru too good at defending. But all of a sudden, the bishops come off. Rook d7, still a draw probably. Still a draw, but suddenly, suddenly Magnus pitch, completely ditches the pawns and the king makes it through. Rook e7, king g6, f6. Oh my goodness. Rook h7 check, king g6. And pawn to f7 seals the deal in a crazy scramble. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have scripted this any better. Magnus jumps out to a two-game lead in the 5 plus 1. Hikaru wins five games out of six, handing Magnus first time in his career. Three losses in a row in the Speed Chess Championship. Takes a three-game lead. And Magnus wins three of the last four games. And it's 9-9 going into bullet. Yes, sir. This is what you call a match. This is what you call a match. Oh my goodness. Pawn to f7 check. It's time for bullet. Nine points each. One minute chess. If the match is tied, we will play more bullet and then we will go to an Armageddon. I mean, you, you, this is just incredible stuff. All right. We start the bullet. E4. Now Magnus playing a Karo Khan defense. A two knights plays knight f6. He Karo goes for queen e2. And Magnus goes for this very, very solid line with bishop a5. We have queen f4. Uh, queen a5, bishop f5, not, not bishop a5, I don't, I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, rook e1, queen g3, and Hikaru goes for an attack. But then he comes back. And then he develops his bishop instead. Trades like this, players hate the knights. Bishop f4, very, very tense game. You can kind of tell, the players are really easing into the bullet. It's a dead even position. Queen f5, now Hikaru starts bringing the rook. Magnus plays over here with a5 and queen b5. But Hikaru seals out Magnus's queen. Which could be bad because you lose f7. And Magnus creates counterplay and gets in. But now it's a free-for-all. I mean, one guy is going to go down here. Rook e2, you lose this, you lose this. Rook e3 pins. Queen takes d4, one by black. But now Kikoro takes on c6. Queen b2, okay. Looks like we're headed for a draw. Queen a2, rook e6. Magnus thought Kikaru was going to trade queens. And he mentally just prepared that move and lost his queen. Oh my god. Oh my god. A crazy brain slip there. That wasn't a mouse slip, but it was a brain slip. And Magnus goes down by hanging a queen in the first game of the bullet. Oh my. Now. 
Magnus staged the comeback. He won two of the next three games and led 12-11 with time ticking on the clock. Now, Magnus opened up with E4, and we have another Spanish. We've had a lot of these. Hikaru once again employing the Steinitz setup with King, King's Indian style, F6. Castles, takes, takes. Very tense game. Magnus recovering from the queen slip. G5, and Hikaru just G4. Take, take. CD, CD. Knight D2, Rook C1, but there, here comes Hikaru. Chucking everything on the queen side. Magnus still poking at him on the queen side because Magnus knows Hikaru's not going to get started with the attack if he stops him down, slows him down on the queen side. Here comes Hikaru though. Take, take. Rook c6. Bishop f8. Hikaru doing everything he can, but Magnus is quicker on the queen side. If Magnus can break through successfully on the queen side, Hikaru's not going to be able to generate enough play quickly enough. Hikaru, rook a2. Position dead equal, but very tense. Knight h4. Rook f7 is, is offering a trade. It's so tense. Oh my god. Queen d5, rook c7. Oh my goodness. Magnus got the piggies on the seventh rank. Rook e8. Queen b5 poking at the rook. King f1. Hikaru barrels in. He barrels in. He's got queen h1, but now king is running. Queen g2, queen d3. Time is ticking, and as it nearly expires... Hikaru doesn't have any more attack. Rook f6, queen b3. And my friends, Magnus Carlsen has taken... The 24th game of the match and leads 13-11 with just five minutes remaining. Hikaru must now win the two remaining games of this match. And then we might get an Armageddon. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Hikaru must win game with the white pieces. Employs once again this obscure Sicilian variation. Bishop e3. He's got these weird bishops in the center. b5, bishop b7. Here comes Hikaru's queen galloping out to the king side. Queen trade. No! Rook d1! Rook e1! The pieces are ready for action while Magnus is once again trying to stop Hikaru's attack by counterattacking on the opposite side of the board. d6. h4! There we go! Rook d3! h5! Hikaru starting an attack. The knight centralizes and the rook is going to rotate over. Bishop h6! But Magnus cold-blooded king f8. The bishop comes back. Now Magnus' turn to sacrifice the knight. Bishop takes e4 though. Hikaru completely doesn't care about all of this. Not worried about these tactics. Takes, takes. Magnus pokes back out. But here comes the h-pawn. Here comes the h-pawn. Queen trade. No! h7! The pawn is sneaking through to become another queen. Now Magnus has to come here, but he's hit from this side with queen b7. And knight f5! Oh my goodness, there's angles coming in from all sides of the board. This pawn is a square away from becoming a queen. It's about to become a queen. Knight e5 h8 magnus had queen h7 here but i guess he was really worried about the collapse of his position a pawn has just snuck through and magnus carlson loses this game and it all will come down if hikaru can win the next game of this match we get armageddon and we get a playoff it is 12 to 13 e4 how is hikaru going to pull off this there is no way he plays g6 He's got to get a worse position to create any winning chances for himself at all. Bishop e2, and let me tell you, the engine is not going to like this. It is a deadly, deadly attempt to play like this. Bishop f3, king b1, the kings are on the same side. How will you possibly create any sort of attacking chances? Well, it's Hikaru and it's Magnus, and together they make magic. Knight f3, g f3. Haha. <laughs> Bishop a2! And out of nowhere, dynamite strikes as the buzzer is expiring. If you take, then queen e6. And he's just going to be a clean pawn down. So instead of that, Magnus goes here. But bishop e6, queen b5. And here comes the attack of Hikaru. Queen c3, queen h5. No, he doesn't want to trade. King a8, queen back to b5. And my friends, Magnus is losing his pawns. And here comes Hikaru, building up a very strong structure. c5. A4, the attack is roaring forward. A, B, C, B, King, B7, making way for the rooks. But rook D6 is a massive, massive commitment. 30 seconds on the clock per player. All you need to do is stack on the A file, maybe two of them. Queen E2, Bishop B3, opposite colored bishops. Favor the attacking side. Rook A8, Magnus knocks on the door, F5. All Hikaru's got to do is take, because after takes 
and takes. He has bishop b3 and the flood gates open. It's over. But instead, he goes queen f1 right away. He plays queen f1 right away, sacrificing his bishop. And now apparently queen a1 and some really weird variation leads to the king running out this way. For example, queen a1, king c2, then you have to find rook a2, king d3, queen d1, king e3, and rook e... And like, I mean, I'm telling you, this is... Instead of that, Hikaru plays rook a1, queen c2, trying to defend against mate. Here comes Hikaru's second rook, and it's winning here because of an absurd tactic. Rook d7, king c6... And in this position, Magnus Carlsen sacrifices not one, but he sacrifices two rooks. Rook c5 check! The point is that the king is left absolutely defenseless, but you might ask against who? The other rook! Rook c7 check! While all of these pieces are just a move away from absolutely taking the white king's soul, king c7, all the queen needs is a little bit of help from her friends. Pawn, bishop, the king's escape is completely sealed. He's got to go to b7, and the game is over now, actually, with a checkmate net. Queen d5, king b8, but the, since the match is over anyway, Magnus Carlsen plays bishop e5 and offers a draw, and the game ends in a draw. King a7 would have led to a mate after bishop d4, king b8, queen d6, king c8, it makes really no difference. Here, 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 here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speed Chess Championship has concluded with Magnus Carlsen beating Hikaru Nakamura 13 and a half to 12 and a half. It literally could not have been any closer at all as the final game literally ended with both players getting checkmated and Magnus sacrificing not one, but two rooks to counterattack Hikaru at the buzzer and seal the match. Are you not entertained? 25% off. Check out the book pre-order. Much love to you all. Much love to Hikaru. Much love to Magnus. Just unbelievable stuff. And we could watch these matches for as long as these guys have the energy to keep playing them. Thank you for what you bring to chess. Get out of here.